we're gonna do this together, and he's gonna start. Okay? So <laughs> Hello everyone. Thank you, Mo. I'm Rob Campbell. For those of you that uh, I have not yet met, there might be two or three of you. Uh, nice to see you. And uh, we have been doing the beginning track over in the other room, in the other building. I think the other farm next door. <laughs> it's a long way. Uh, oh yeah, there's there's chickens. There's there's some things that smell kind of strange, right? <laughs> oh, is that the kitchen? Okay. <laughs> That's dinner. <laughs> Okay, so our session here on your schedule is music choice and the level of the group. Uh, and it's a little bit difficult to know how to start this, except to think about, um, let's say, the groups that are the A level, B level, C level. All right, now you can think about your course, your course, and maybe you know where they scored last time they were in a contest. Mm -hmm. They might have scored a 65 or a 70. Okay, so if, uh, just <coughs> the A level is what? 81 to 100. B level is 61 to 80. C level is 41 to 60. So most groups in Holland Harmony are probably somewhere in the B level, right? Where did, where did the... Where was the contest won last time? New Harvest Singers? 77.4. 77, just approximately 77.4. <laughs> 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 so the can't remember. OK, so, so that's the, the high score at the moment until next March. All right, uh, where do you suppose the lowest group was? Anyone can guess? 53. 56.50s. Three. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle 50s? All right, let's call it a 53. Okay, so in, in your organization, this is our range. Mm -hmm. So there's certain songs that are more difficult than others that a group like the New Harvest Singers or mm -hmm. I Sing or some of the better groups could sing. But if we gave it to this group, what would happen? Wow. We, we don't even want to think about no. what might happen. <clears throat> okay, give me an example of a difficult song or a challenging song. Rain on my parade. Rain on my parade. Okay, how about another one? <laughs> no, that's okay. We, we make a little list. They can't take that away from me. I don't know that arrangement. <clears throat> how about in your chorus? Is there a song that's Challenging. Lover come back to me. That is a difficult song. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. Some of you are just looking at me like it's it's dinner time. It's uh, time for the toy time. You're nobody. You're nobody till somebody loves you. You're nobody till somebody loves you. Exactly. That's a difficult melody, isn't it? Is. It's a challenging melody. <laughs> Why is it difficult? It has jumps, it has skips. That's okay. And so it's the nature of the melody, that's one of the factors mm -hmm. in difficulty level. So it's not only the arrangement, but it's the song itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have some things to think about when we think about a difficulty <coughs> level. Okay, one is the melody. And you have to just kind of think technically about the melody. Mm -hmm. Easier melodies are smoother melodies. That's easy, right? 
Because then we call that stepwise motion. It goes to the next step mm -hmm. in the scale. Mm -hmm. So that would be easier. You're nobody till somebody loves you, has a jumps and skips. So that's more difficult. Okay. So that's. Uh, why don't you put whatever you want for that? I don't know how to describe that in, in Netherlands. English, it would be stepwise motion versus skips. Stops for that. Stops for Okay. All right. And then another thing when you're thinking about the melody difficulty is the range, where the low note is and where the high note is. Okay. And normally a good amateur singer can sing an octave pretty well. Okay. If, if it's a woman, she could probably sing from an F to an F or a G to a G. Something like that, um, A to an A. So a good range for a woman, she could even go a little over. She could have an F down there up to about an A. Okay, that's an octave and a third. I wouldn't put, I, I have to say, I would not put, uh, I would not make an arrangement for a woman to sing a uh, lead to sing a low F. It's too low. It's too low. Okay. Even G sometimes is hard. A is sometimes yeah. hard to get power in it. Mm -hmm. I would probably. Pick something that is more around B flat or C right. or B yeah. flat area yeah. up to C or D. Maybe right. just keep it within that yeah. octave, maybe exactly. a tenth. Yeah. So, so what is your good low note for a D? Uh, it depends, but then again, it depends on the chorus, and it depends on what your leads are capable of doing, and you need to know what their limits are, and especially you could choose what the power notes are. There are some some arrangements that spiral around one do. Mm -hmm. Do you sing best in E? Or best in G or A or F or D. Like you know, some courses really have a place where their particular lead section really shines. And if they're like, Hi, I'm all alone. Nobody wants me. Hi, da, 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 da. Nobody wants me. Nobody cares. Right around in there. If they know how to ring, choose that song. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Aww. if you can get behind it. I mean, the lyric. Yeah. I don't you know, much go for the body bag now. It's <laughs> else with me. You have something against body bags? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the, the fancy word for that is body bags. What they wrap you up in your dead if you're dead. <laughs> so that general area where where the leads stays a lot. Mm -hmm. The big power notes for that melody, the tessitura, that's, mm -hmm. the range is where's the low to high. And the tessitura is where it sits. Is it a lowish kind of melody? Is it a higher melody? Where are the big notes? Where does that melody stay? And that's, that is a key because that's what they're really singing. Mm -hmm. Especially the big climaxes and the big uh, chords that are held. It's actually one of the areas that there's a difficulty for uh, men's arrangements that are translated into female voices mm -hmm. is that it often puts the lead below the baritone mm -hmm. and it makes it a little hard, harder to balance yeah. with a lot of power. So it's just something to look for. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so we have the stepwise motion versus skips. We have the range, low to high, and we have the tessitura. Where's the general place where that melody is? I think that's pretty much it for melody. Mm -hmm. Just thinking of difficulty mm -hmm. versus easy. <clears throat> I'd say key for the basses. You know, are the basses going to be in a women's chorus, for instance? Are they going to be dragging on a low D flat? Or are you going to be able to, if you want to bump up the range, you know, are you going to be able to have it in the key of E flat without the tenors being in the stratosphere? Yeah. <laughs> you know, or putting the leads up into a really uncomfortable place to sing just by bumping it up. Or the other thing is, sometimes you can take a song that you sing really well in one key and you think, yeah, let's just bump it up a little bit to give it some spark and it sounds really good or really bad. Just that half step can make it ring or not ring. I don't know why that is, but it seems to be the case in the, in the head of the singers. Some groups just sing better in some keys. I don't know why. And people will even say, sharp keys ring more. I don't know why, but it's right. I don't know why. There, there is some, you know, theoretical lining up of the, you know, the um, Pythagorean tuning, but 
it's just something to consider. You know, if you're going to bump it up, if you have to bump it up, is it bumping into a key that will sing well with your singers? Mm -hmm. And sometimes some key, you know, if it's in F, sometimes it'll flat a little bit. But if you mm -hmm. put it in F sharp, yeah. sometimes it'll stay in F sharp. Exactly. I don't know why that is either. But whatever so works. Mysteries. Whatever works. Like what really happens great. to the socks in the dryer when one goes missing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never to be found again. Never to be found again. Dryers is eating it. Dryers. Why is that sharp raining? What happened to my sock? But <laughs> <laughs> the world's, you know, the big question is the life. So we're thinking about the low bass, where's the low bass, and then where's the high tenor? Nobody cares about the baritones, they suck it up. Yeah. Yeah. What are you laughing at? I suck it up. The socks. Let's see. Yeah. Not one of mine. What else do we think about? For choosing songs. Okay, now let's, I think we've, we've actually talked about most of the difficulty level part. The personality of the chorus, I think. Yeah, let's go to the, the next thing, which is just general, how do you choose a song? Personality of the chorus. Yeah, it's a power chorus. Yeah. Let's give you a Is that, is that the right word, chorus personality? Chorus, I guess. All right, chorus personality. Certain choruses can do certain songs where someone else just wouldn't be able to do it. They like it. Sometimes they just like those songs better. All right. What other things do we think about when we choose songs? The rhythm. What about the rhythm? I mean, is it, you mean just choosing a rhythm song? No, no, the, the difficulty of the rhythm. Difficulty of yeah, the rhythm. The, the, the okay. Uh, what do you call it? Back time. Or, yeah, back time. I'd say downbeat or backbeat would be one of the choices we'd be looking at. And your root swing. Yeah, swing. Can you change that? Syncopation. Yeah. You know, a lot of barbershop groups have trouble with swing. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's, it's our regular old time songs tend to be straight on the Marching beat. Marching songs. Bum, bum, Strong on beat one and three. We have a lot of those. Lazy days. Bum, 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 da, da, da. That's very straightforward rhythm. The swing, we don't, we don't have it quite as often. And you know, some of the choruses, they struggle. Oh, yeah. What makes it a swing song? Emphasis on beats two and four. Two and four. And triplet subdivision. The thing about triplet subdivision, I want to add something about that, is that it's really easy to go da 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 which just gives you downbeat yeah. subdivided into triplets. Yeah. It's yeah. actually, swing is actually emphasizing the middle triplet of each stack yeah. of triplets. Yeah. So there's four sets of triplets, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's actually swing. Just Good. Like, I like that. Did you understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite understand that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's not yapa pa 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 which I demonstrated. Pa 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 You're nobody till somebody loves you. You're singing the swing beats, but you're not swing, singing the swing feel. For instance. I like the first way. You're nobody till somebody loves you. You're nobody till somebody cares. Now that's sophisticated, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you so, slow it down, it's simple. 
And if you let your brain be teachable instead of an adult, you'll just stay with it. Do you go, oh, oh, okay, got it. But it's, that doesn't, it, uh, it is easier to say, it's no, but that, uh, Well, some people think that it's, it's the dotted, the eighth note, the dotted sixteenth, or the dotted eighth note with the sixteenth. But it's not. It's the one right before that 16 that's actually the string beat, not the 16. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Would you want to do? Would you want to do a swing song with a C level group? Probably. You should be pretty careful if you're going to try that. They have great rhythm. Because this is, well, but a group that's scoring, you know, 58 probably has problems of tuning, problems of vowel matching, problems of rhythm. You know, the groups that are under 60 generally have sort of basic problems. And I, I hope I'm not offending anyone by <coughs> saying that. Okay, but if you're up in over, if you're to the B level, especially if you're over 70, mm -hmm. they, can, they can really do a pretty good job on those things take on the challenge. I mean, it's one thing to choose music that you're going to score well with, but I say don't ever do that. Because a number isn't going to feel good in your head when you go to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Singing kick-ass music is. Mm -hmm. So you need to challenge your singers all the time to go to their next level where they don't think they can go yet. It's your job to help them understand you believe in them more than they believe in themselves until they can believe in themselves and then step forward and step forward. So I say give things to people that are just going to make them try a little harder, but not so big that they can't feel success with it. And then back it up to the education that you need to make it happen. So we're going to challenge the chorus, but not too much. Not too much. But definitely, if we were teaching this today, whatever the level is, we had a group that was a much different level than your group. Yeah. So we were trying to just put our bar this much higher, yeah. give them something that if they worked at it, they could get there. And now you can say, good job. You know, I could hear that we, we made some overtones. Yeah. Well, wow, that was you know, big thing for them. They loved it. That's barbershop, one of them said. Yeah. You know? So it's the same thing with music choice. Yeah. You, know, you always want to, as a director, be yourself operating a level higher and challenging them up to that level. Yeah. That's a good point. I happen to, I think in numbers because I'm a judge, yeah. but it really is a very limited way to think about things. So I like your version even better. Huh. All right, so we challenge them with our music choice, but not three levels up, just a little bit higher. Okay, what other things do we think about when choosing music for our choir? The repertoire. Yeah. Yeah. Balancing. Do we, yeah. You don't want to have the fifth uh, sleeping song in, in your repertoire. You don't want to have five ballads and one up to. You want to have a balanced repertoire. Okay, that's good. And also balanced topics, actually. And that balance can be a lot of different things. You can have certain things or. Uh, songs from a certain era, for a nice group that you can perform with. Yeah, especially if you're going to do a show. Yeah. You might do a kind of a gospel type show, or you know, do Beatles songs. You know, and here's a, a '60s tribute to the '60s show, mm -hmm. and that gives you a grouping of songs. Who was I was talking to someone about Lazy Days? Do you remember the group that did that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spanky and our gang. <laughs> and they had two or three other songs that were very similar. You could do a little Spanky and our gang package. <laughs> Sunday will never be the same. You had a great voice. She did Spanky. Bang. Yeah, yeah straight, straight forward. Yeah. Okay, so you can have, uh, what do we call that? Theme. There's, there can be a, a theme grouping for songs. But balance, we want to have, let's just a quick list of the kinds of songs. We have ballads, we have uptunes. This is for your chorus overall, your whole repertoire. What else would you have in there? Churches. 
easy beat. <coughs> and that might have some swingy kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Some tempo in the middle. Yeah. Gospel. Gospel. Let's just make a, a quick list. R&B. <laughs> yeah. Pop songs. <laughs> you could have a kind of, yeah, non-barbershop. We used to call it modern. <laughs> they used to call it modern. <laughs> modern was for the 50s. They call it 50s for modern. Uh, holiday songs, absolutely. Christmas, etc. Holiday songs, special event kind of songs. There's, you know, some special Dutch songs. Dutch songs. Yeah. 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 Uh, sometimes there's a comedy song, some kind of funny musical comedy. There's medleys. <laughs> what? Musicals. From Broadway musicals? Mm -hmm. Alright, Broadway. Shanty choir. <laughs> okay, so you know, you think about as a director what what you want your chorus personality to be back there, and some of that is related to what is your mix of songs. Are you an upbeat kind of group? I was in uh, Sweden recently, and there was a Sweet Adeline's chorus that was just very much in your face, and they sang just nothing but up tunes. It's like four up tunes in a row. Stop home city cars? We like Alice. I was so surprised because they didn't have any range. They Do you just... remember the group? Was it Pearls of the Sand or Running the Show Chorus? Oh, no, no. So it wasn't uh, Running. Okay. <laughs> Harmony it was, Heights. It was Cops somewhere Town. around Stockholm. Farstaff. Farstaff Harmony. Um, Vesperos. Um, Stockholm Starlight. You know, if you told me, I probably wouldn't remember. Okay, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> okay, but, but the point is that they were they didn't have any range, mm. and in the particular set we saw, mm. and they might have had it. They just they chose, you know, they chose four of these. Yeah. Okay. What else do we think about? <coughs> Anything? We're choosing songs for our chorus. We're down to the last two minutes before Ooh. dinner time. Very close. So if you have a last minute thought here, <laughs> now's the time. Um, songs that would fit in the next uh, uh, performance you're going to do? Like a convention or like a show? Or like a yeah, contest, let's say. Uh, if they are for the next show, they'd be up here with theme, theme yeah. group. Something mm -hmm. some, uh, patriotic. Do you sing patriotic songs? Will I have one thing that I don't want to consider? Is given the accent that you have as non-English speakers, you might want to choose your music around some of the trap traps. Like in, in Stockholm, I will never ask, ever ask my chorus to sing on the Mississippi. Because they will come up on the Mississippi, on the Mississippi. <laughs> That's what it'll sound like. No matter how long we rehearse it, it'll come up Mississippi. I guarantee it. And as Dutch people, you might want to look at some of the lyrics and how they mm -hmm. land in your mouth mm -hmm. to make it easy. Like, don't pick something that makes it really hard, that you have to keep pronouncing this thing that's really hard to pronounce as a Dutch speaker singing English. Mm -hmm. So you might want to consider that. Religious yeah. songs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Occasionally you'll have a, you know, Irish blessing kind of a song. Okay, that's a pretty good list. So mainly we started out the session talking about difficulty level and choosing music that's not too difficult. We want to challenge groups, but we don't want to challenge them too much. We want to give them something they can achieve. All right, we talked about some technical things in the melody. 
We talked about basic course personality, rhythm patterns, a little bit about swing, challenging the group, and then balancing the repertoire and a list of categories. Mm -hmm. One question from the practical side. Do, we, do I have to always organize the sheet music, or would, how, how would you choose a practical music? Because when I look into the Barbershop uh, Harmony Society catalogs, I see those titles, and I don't know what the arrangement is until I order it and pay quite mm -hmm. a lot of money. True. Mm -hmm. so, so you, can order you can order <coughs> single copies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also you might you might be able to um, Tim Work has made like learning tracks for everything under the sun. You might be able to contact him and at least get you know some sort of a sound bite so you have an idea of what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. As long as you promise to pay him for it, you know if you use it, you know you can just ask. Mm -hmm. Because he's done like two or three songs. This whole song song song's for a ninety-nine cents or something. Yeah, so not. Okay. Yeah, he's not alone. There are others. Yeah, Johnny Metzger, um, really great for women's voices. Uh, Leanne, uh, uh, Amy, Amy Leacock um, from Moxie Ladies, she does them. Uh, there's a woman, Jen Cook from the Atlanta area, she does them. So there's some really good. So you can look them up, maybe they have a website. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those little sound bites, sometimes that's enough to give you. An idea, you yeah, know, that, that might work for us or that won't. You don't necessarily need the whole thing. Okay. Other questions or comments? Are we done? Yes. Covered it so far. Okay, we are done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.